Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Dallin Hall with a game winner last night. Another look at that. Or as BYU basketball's social media accounts put out last night, Dal Him Hall. <laughs> he is he him. He is Dal Him Hall. He is Hall. him, yeah. Exactly. And Dallin Hall is joining us in Studio B. What's hey, up, dude? What a night. What a night. Thank you for having me on the show today. Did you sleep at all? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Took me a bit, but yeah. When, when did you actually fall asleep? Because I imagine it was a while to come down from that excitement. Yeah, I think 1 o'clock was the last time I remember being like still wired <laughs> how many texts and dms last night <laughs> i don't know man i'll have to count it up today we'll see <laughs> yeah, he's again just first things for a sleep and then get up and you know encounter it that way uh walk us through the shot last night. i know you did with me last night uh, in our post game interview but now that you've had the night to think about it and you've seen a bunch of replays of it walk us through that last play and what was drawn up and what was expected of you yeah, um, coach drew up a play. It was more to kind of get us open in that full court. We expected them to pick up full court to try and slow us down. Um, as it happened, they didn't, so I just ran a hard slant route. I think Jaron Hall would have thrown that nice to me. <laughs> hall to Hall, baby. Hall to Hall. Um, but they, I came down the court, and they stuck really tight to their guys because we had been shooting so well. And so it gave me space to get downhill and then... Um, was able to finish the shot, fortunately, and that was the first one I got to see go down that night, so that mm. felt good. How long did it take you to figure out that you were going to shoot the ball? Um, when I drove and no one helped, I was pretty confident in my ability to get my shot off and to score it, and so that just goes to having great teammates that are such great players. So, that yeah, there's no help off of Tiki, so it's all on you. So you, you kind of absorb the contact, and so all that... Time in the weight room's been worth it, right? Yes. And then you sure. lay it off the glass. What's that moment like when you actually see it go in? Um, it's like, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then the next feeling is there's still 1.4 on the clock. It, usually I love to see that just go off the clock. But, uh, you know, I'm just thinking someone told me about the Della Vadova dagger after and how it yep. felt like that. <laughs> and <laughs> and that, so, was, <laughs> that was Tyler Hawes we were talking about in the post game. Like, Tyler makes this incredible shot like you. Yeah. Uh, right side, banker, I believe, yep. as well. And then Della Vidaga races it up, like, second half and makes it. So when Chance Moore lets go of that ball, we're, BYU fans are thinking, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I did not, not, a, like those not shots. again. And it wasn't even close. Yes, fortunately. The yeah. line looked good, but depth not close. Yes. And then the team just embraces you. What's that moment like uh, to celebrate that win together? Yeah, it's special because those guys are family to me. Um, with the amount of time we've put in together, the culture we have here at BYU, and um, just the time that we've spent together made it so special to have them support me, and I couldn't have done it without them from the beginning of the summer till now. Mm -hmm. And so to have those guys around me as I got to be in that moment was super special for me. And then here in the post game, uh, <laughs> in, in the locker room, water, that's how we roll, right? Um, that's how we and, roll. and I noticed in particular, it stuck out to me that Rudy Williams right here, he gives you a big hug on the court and then in the locker room. Rudy could be, like, upset that he's the veteran, the starter. He's not in at the game, in the, at the end in two of the home games. Now. No, he is a great teammate. And, and how's the relationship? Because it seems like you guys just want to win. You don't care whether you're in, he's in, whatever. No, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, Rudy is just a team first guy. He has been since he got here. And he's been especially important in my development. I always go to him. I talk to him. And so we've formed a good bond, point guard to point guard, where he's kind of been my mentor throughout this summer, helping me to get better. And so that's really what it is. We play for each other. I know he could have made that shot. And so it just happened to be my turn to step up. And uh, he's a team first guy. So he's just happy that we got the W. And I know he'll do the same next time. When did point guard for you become a reality because you can play a number of positions on the guard line when, when did BYU needing you as a point guard become like your reality um yeah I, I knew coming in my freshman year like uh I just wanted to do whatever I had to do to get on the floor so whether that was play shooting guard small forward point guard it didn't matter um I just wanted to help my team win but ultimately in talking with Coach Pope and him recruiting me, point guard has always been something that I've played, and um, he's always recognized the, the vision that I've had, and so that was kind of my hopes in coming here was to be able to play that point guard position. 
Was your mouth guard still in at the end of the game? Tyler and I always look like, because I always say, beware the mouth guard guy. It's going to battle. <laughs> He's like ready to throw down, right? Did you have the mouth guard in at the end? Yeah, I have a okay, adjusted you still have. one. Okay. <laughs> a little thinner. Okay. Because the one in the beginning, I was like, yeah, what's going on? Uh, so they hooked you up with a better one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mama Hall insisted, so. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mama Hall's like, hey, you're on TV now. We got to look a certain way. She no. wanted. Yeah, she's like, you can't be looking like a running back out there. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Have you always been a mouth guard guy? I have, yeah. So this front tooth right here has been knocked out like three times. What? Yeah, so. Ever since then, I just always make sure I have it in. It's a thing. Like, Tyler has multiple fake teeth as well. Huh? Wow. Like, it's, it's a thing. We, we haven't battled hard enough. We're not mouth guard guys. <laughs> Although Spence was a lockdown defender in high school. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Well, Dallin Stick knows what Northridge High School zone. basketball is about. And, <laughs> and situational awareness in the safety zone, yeah, right? Well, yeah. right. <laughs> obedience to the uh, principles of the offense. No, let's, let's talk about uh, th these two home games. We, and we were just talking about, is winning enough? Because certainly these teams on paper, people go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is it so close? Winning is great. It, it's great. Everyone loves it. But it's like, shouldn't we blow these guys out? Hey, first game was Idaho State. It's first game. It's a new group. Missouri State was better than people thought. And we kept telling people that. I don't know that anyone believed us. They were good. Now you have Nichols at home. How do you, how do you get to the point where when, when the moment's right that you can kind of uh, not come down to the wire, perhaps, against a team at home that people expect you to beat handily? Yeah, I think we got to really break down some film uh, because we had it to 10 and then we had a couple def defensive lapses and we got stagnant on offense. Um, luckily, Trey Stewart stepped up big last night. He got us going on uh, offensively. He was huge um, at the end. Me and him were tandeming back and forth. Um, but we're going to really dig into the film and make sure that when we do get that lead, we lock in and that way we're able to extend it. Um, but we'll always take a win um, because as long as it's going towards the win column, we're happy. Only three turnovers in the second half. Has BYU turned a corner in that regard? <laughs> I'm hoping so. Yeah, we've put a lot of emphasis on taking care of the ball, protecting it, um, and valuing our possessions. And so I thought it was a good blend of playing fast still and taking care of the ball, and so hopefully we can keep that rolling. Um, but, yeah, we bounced back well from that first half. And Mark Pope said as much at shoot around yesterday saying, I don't want to, I don't want to sort of pull back and then the ball doesn't move. Right. So there's so, this sort of like tolerating risk in uh, turnover and so on. Okay. Uh, when you look at, um, Atiki and Noah last night, really nice contributions with the second team there. You've seen Noah in practice, shoot it five for five on his first, uh, uh, offerings there. That was incredible. And really kept you guys in the game when, when, uh, the team was struggling a little bit. Yeah, he carried us for sure. Um, he's a big-time player that will always hit big-time shots. And tonight, he I mean, last night, he was huge for us. Um, and he's put in tons of hours of practice. I've seen him after practice getting shots up. And so he was ready for the moment, and he really stepped up and was big for us. And then, like I said, Trey Stewart was just mm -hmm. dicing the defense, finding him. So those two together were a deadly combo. And then I can't say enough about Atiki. That wow, guy what a was night. crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm guarding my guy. And then I just see two hands come over top of me and just swat that thing and get the rebound. <laughs> like, that's awesome to have behind you. And, you know, he's a team first guy. Like, even if he's yeah. on the bench, he is just totally engaged. He's there for Foose. And tonight, Foose was there for him. And it was so special to see him just have a huge night. And we know he can keep that going. Dallin, there are video bombs. And then there are video bombs from the GOAT at BYU, Danny Ainge. Okay? <laughs> Crazy moment. I'm interviewing you. He comes up and he's, you know, giving you big props. You said he's a great mentor to you. How, how explain that relationship to us. Like what, what is his mentorship to you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I first met him like at a Gonzaga game when I was getting recruited um, and we had a really good talk and, you know, he's so knowledgeable about the game. He's one of the best basketball minds in the game. So anytime you get an opportunity to talk like to someone like that, especially, a, you know, a BYU hero like him, um, I always try and pick his brain. And so he's been really good at whenever I have the chance to giving me advice, telling me to play free, play my game. And so I think that was a special moment for both of us because he saw it kind of pay off there at the end. And um, I'm going to keep obviously picking his brain, but I'm super grateful for him and all the advice he's given me and the mentorship he's had for me. I just thought he really messed up your hair, though, <laughs> with all that product you didn't put in last night. Yeah, I mean, 
I guess my teammates did too. So <laughs> yeah, whatever, just, right? I'm just kidding. It's a mess for the hair. Whatever. Who was who was uh, who were some of the guys you watched growing up uh, that you really admired and maybe patterned your game after in some way? Yeah, that's funny actually because I remember telling Danny Ainge. Um, he told me to compare my game to someone in that first conversation we had years ago, and I told him. Um, you know, I'd love to say Steph Curry because that's who I watch the most. Um, but my shooting is not quite there yet. We're getting there. Um, but I think I told him Steve Nash, just my ability to play the pick and roll to find players. And he was like, wow, that's crazy. I actually drafted him. And I was like, holy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a blend of players. Usually, um, I think the reason I was recruited heavily by Coach Pope was my vision. And so... Being surrounded with so many great shooters makes for awesome pick and roll. So I'm just grateful and fortunate to be playing with the guys I'm playing with. All right, before you go, your teammates told me to put you on the spot here. Oh, boy. Because of the Korg impression. Oh, dude, and that went viral last week. Awesome. That was awesome. But they tell me that you have more in the arsenal. Okay? <laughs> Is that true? Are, are there others Can besides Korg? we get another Korg? one? <laughs> um, I might have some others later in store for y'all. We'll see. Okay. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Can't can't pull all the tricks out of the sure. bag. Can you give yeah. us a little cord for those that may have missed it? <laughs> I don't some... know if anyone missed it. <laughs> <laughs> you just put it out there. Yeah. It got out there. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's really that's good. Awesome. So if you just said like, "Hey, BYU win," like say, "BY BYU is a winner," and cord impression. All right. We'll see if I can. Um, hey, hey, hey. BYU got the W last night. Let's go, man. <laughs> <laughs> Taika Watiti for the win. That is Taika, that that's is awesome. Fantastic. Oh, Dallin, great to have you with us. Uh, congratulations again on the game winner. And, uh, man, a great start to your career at BYU. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Go Cougs, baby. Okay, we'll see you Saturday. All right.